Hello, um, I will be speaking about course selection today. Um, this is more of our general section in the Sophomore Success Night presentation series. Um, we'll be talking a little bit about graduation requirements, um, what those look like, as well as how they might differ from what colleges might be looking for and what you might see on college websites. We'll talk about um, helping students their, with their four-year plan, as well as get into the um, various sequences within our, our course selection options. So here are the graduation requirements for all students at DSHA. As you can see here, obviously we, we expect girls to have those four full years in both English and theology. Um, and, and really when, when we say, you know, girl, students need to have um, three years of mathematics, this is where you might begin to see with some of the colleges that students may be considering that you might see a difference in what a college would recommend versus require. Um, most colleges are going to require the same types of requirements um, that you would see here for, for high school, um, but their recommendations might be something a bit more rigorous depending on the, um, how selective uh, that, that individual college might be. Most notably, colleges might um, bring to light world languages um, at some selective colleges, even within the state of Wisconsin, um, it's recommended that students have three to four years in the same foreign language. That doesn't mean that if you only have two years that you will not get in, um, but it's when you see a college recommends a certain level of or number of years in, in a language, that just means that most students are coming in with those three to four years in the same foreign, foreign language. Here is a four-year planner template that we shared with all students. There are additional templates that can be found in student services if students would like access to this. They can also reach out to their counselor if they um, would like a, vir uh, a virtual option um, or a, an option shared over email with them of this. Um, we like to use this tool as both a way for students to count the number of credits that they have in individual subject areas, as well as planning out their four years to help them see, um, you know, if schools are looking for them to have those three to four years, or it's recommended that they have those three to four years in a foreign language, is that something that they're making time for in their junior and senior years? Um, as well as making sure that the, it is helpful for them to um, see that they are reaching the other individual requirements, such as um, a full credit of um, fine arts, a half credit of specialized studies, as well as a half credit of uh, women's health. Um, all of our individual semester classes, for the most part, um, will earn a student a half credit. So a full year of English will earn a student one full credit in English. Um, so uh, let that be a helpful aid when planning out um, your course selection. We have one new course for the 2022-2023 uh, school year. It is a character-driven leadership course, um, which is located within the specialized studies area. Um, most notably, I have been leading um, students to get a better idea of that third bullet point. This course will focus on four principal areas of leadership, which include leading yourself, identifying your leadership mindset, allowing yourself to be led, and leading by example. These um, principal areas of leadership are going to be what the, the framework of the class is kind of revolved around. Um, if you are a student who thinks, you know, I have pretty good leadership qualities already, um, I like to be a leader in my sports team or in the theater, um, in the classroom even, um, you know, this could be a really great class for you. You might look at some of these principles and also say, I don't know how to identify my leadership mindset. Um, this is a helpful way for you to get a bit more information on, you know, how you can lead, um, not just by, you know, you know, saying the right things to your teammates or um, helping students along, but also identifying how you work as a leader. Um, it was shared with me that this class is going to be more of an active participation class. So if you are a student who um, worries about raising your hand or um, is a bit more tentative to, you know, jump and, you know, participate in a group, um, you know, you might want, want to put this class off for another year. Um, 
really the this class is going to expect students to um, fully participate and and want to get involved and raise their hand and ask questions um, so that is a little bit more about character driven leadership if you have questions about that feel feel free to reach out to your school counselor all right now we will get into the um, individual sequences of each of the subject areas so specifically for juniors and seniors, um, you will see that there is a multitude of options available to students. All of these options with one consider with two considerations are semester long options. So if you identify one of these courses that looks interesting to you, you probably need to identify a second one to fulfill that second semester. The exception to that is the AP English Language and Composition, as well as the AP English Literature course. Both of those are year-long courses where you need to sign up for both the first semester and the second semester of that class. All of the other classes are going to be semester long. Um, any of the courses that have an asterisk at the end of it or has like a college name um, before the actual name, um, those are going to be considered our dual enrollment, dual credit courses. Um, so you can hear more about dual credit in the other video that we have shared um, on this page. Um, but all of our courses are going to be college prep as, or, or at that higher level of AP or dual credit. Um, so students can be, um, you know, be expected to be challenged with a variety of different types of literature. Um, we do, you will see that um, we have a course called writing course and that um, will encourage the girls to, you know, practice their writing outside of just the analytical writing, um, but something with a bit more creative as well as it helps girls plan for their college essay. In the math sequence, um, really for juniors, the, there are, you know, really two, typically two options, sometimes three. Um, at that honors track, we'll see that students are moving typically from honors geometry to honors trig and pre-calc and then on to an AP calc or regular calc option. Um, if students are at that honors um, geometry and they took freshman algebra two as, um, as a freshman, then they would typically move on to the pre-calc track with trig. Um, and then finally, if you were a student who took algebra one as a freshman and then took geometry, um, you would move on to Algebra 2 with trigonometry. <clears throat> um, in the science sequence, um, similar to English, you'll see that there are many, many options available to you. Um, most students are obviously um, getting that background in biology and now chemistry this year. Um, you may have taken some of those earth science semester courses and now um, you'll see that there is a new earth science year-long option available. Um, many of these classes are all going to be um, year-long options. So you have to sign up for both the first semester and the second semester of a physics course or of um, honors anatomy and physiology. Um, the only exception you'll see is called food chemistry. Um, that is just a semester long course. So if you are interested, if you've really been enjoying chemistry this year, um, then food chemistry could be a great way to experiment with foods um, and have that um, have that experience. Um, many colleges do like to see two to three years in lab sciences, so that would be biology, chemistry, and physics. Um, but the um, if you are interested in more of environmental sciences, um, the environmental science class does fall under that lab science option. Um, you will see that we have um, three options for juniors in APs, AP Bio, AP Chem, and AP Environmental Science. Um, if you have questions about these, please feel free to reach out to your current science teacher or your school counselor. In social studies, we have a number of options available. Um, most notably, it's, it is necessary to say that all students have to graduate with at least one year of a U.S. history, whether that be in U.S. history or AP U.S. history, students need to complete U.S. history before they graduate. Um, you'll see a variety of different options for students that are both year-long options, which are the AP options, so AP government, AP U.S. history, and AP human geography for juniors specifically. Um, and then the rest of the options that are listed below are going to be semester options. Um, so 
we really encourage students to move in the direction of their interests. Um, you know, find out what looks interesting, read about the description in the course guide, um, and that will give you a bit more information. If you have additional questions about does this class have more projects or does this class, you know, how much does this class read a night? That would be a really appropriate question for your current social studies teacher. Um, they would know a little bit more about that. We do have three dual credit options, um, which are designated by the um, asterisk at the end. Um, the tumultuous 60s does not have an asterisk, but it is a dual credit option. Um, as, as I mentioned in the dual credit um, video that you can typically expect a little bit more work coming from the dual credit as well as the AP options comparative to um, some of the other semester long options that are available to students. Um, African and Asian studies are the two courses that are not offered every year, but they actually alternate which year they are offered. So for the 2022-2023 school year, Asian studies will be offered and African studies would be offered then your senior year in the 2023-2024 school year. In fine arts, um, it's important for students to know that you obviously need one full credit for graduation. Um, that, but also there are certain requirements for students if they want to move to a higher level in their fine arts classes. So to move into ceramics and drawing and painting, you do need art foundations. Um, if you did not take art foundations and you maybe took concert choir or something, you can most certainly move into the fine arts. But as juniors and seniors without art foundations, you would need to take the self-expression course. Um, that is only allowed for juniors and seniors, um, but it's a great way for them to get some of those foundational skills. And then you can also take any of the other courses after taking self-expression. Similarly, if you maybe started in art foundations, but you wanted to move into handbells, um, you can most certainly be able to do that. Um, if you are coming with any background and being able to read music, you can talk to Mr. Egan um, and he can possibly move you into a higher level for handbells um, and, and that is an option with approval. Similarly, in the theater arts, um, if you have any background in acting, um, you can talk to Mr. Ziegler about getting that approval to move to a higher level. Under specialized studies, um, this is really the, the content area where you see more of these interdisciplinary areas that students are able to make connections between what they're learning in their math classes and their social studies classes um, and how they specifically relate to um, career based work. Um, you know, you, you can see a variety of different STEM options, business options. Um, as well as areas that kind of uh, go beyond and, and touch base on everything. Um, so Marion Scholars is a great way for students to um, have that one-on-one -on -one, uh, work with uh, other peers here at DSHA um, to be able to support their individual needs in the classroom. Um, and then something like statistics is gonna be an area where many students will have to see something like statistics in college. Um, but they can relate it more directly um, to what their interests. All right, so lastly, here are the important dates to remember for the 2022-2023 school year. Course selection opened on January 13th at 7 a.m. and it will close on January 28th at 7 p.m. Um, it is necessary for all of the girls and parents to go in and sign off in my DSHA on their course requests. Um, all of our course selection is done through my DSHA um, under course requests. If you have any questions about this, please do not hesitate to reach out to your school counselor. Um, you know, meeting graduation requirements, we really do ask that that is the student's responsibility to track. Um, school counselors will do their best to, to track that as well. Um, but there is a lot of information here and, um, you know, we want to make sure that that we are meeting your needs, but also you are doing the planning uh, on your own as well. Um, so if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to your school counselor um, and we will do our best to uh, meet the needs that you have. Thank you.